There are many definitions of dead. I had no pulse and I wasn't breathing. Yes, I think I was dead. And I'm a scientist, highly trained surgeon. I am my own greatest skeptic. <laughs> I felt my spirit peeling away from my body. And eventually I felt my body break free. And the moment I gave up control, I believe I was being held by Christ. And I had this incredible feeling of his just pouring his love into me. We use love as an emotional word, but it was as though you could not only feel it, but you could experience it and see it. And it was complete and absolute and pure. It was as though I'd been on this long journey to earth, and now I was home. I, mean, I spent a long, long time trying to analyze this and really trying to come up with an alternative explanation. I came to the conclusion that it was exactly as I knew it to be, which was true and real. There are some things that are beyond science and beyond medicine. Uh, when I was on the riverbank, uh, you have to understand that this was a very inaccessible part of the river. There really, there were no people, let alone roads. I mean, my husband didn't go kayaking with us that day because you could not get off the river. You were going to be on the river until the takeout. And so when I uh, regained consciousness in my body, I will never ever forget the look on the face, faces of these guys that were doing CPR because it was this combination of excitement and shock because even though we all think CPR works, it doesn't usually work. And especially without advanced medical care, CPR almost never works. And so I think they were shocked, but in addition to that, they were just going, oh, now what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what do we do now? Because there's nothing. And so uh, while they were in this state of just being shell-shocked, uh, they looked up and there were these Chilean young men. I mean, just there. I mean, there were, there were angels, because there's no possible way to get to this part of the river unless you came by boat. But here were these guys, and one of them had a machete, and a guy had a two-by-four, and they just never said a word. Nobody ever spoke to them. Uh, they just appeared, and they walked over, put my body on top of a kayak, and then they, with these guys, uh, started carrying me on top of the kayak. And uh, one of the guys, you know, was whapping his way through the bamboo. And the hillsides are very, very steep and very thickly covered with bamboo. So uh, they would, you know, go up and slide back and go up and slide back. And eventually they came to this little uh, animal trail. And so they started following the trail. And after a few hours, uh, they came to a dirt road, and, and I, they readily said later they didn't even know what they were hoping for. They just were sort of thinking that eventually they might get to a road, and then maybe they could run for miles and find a tractor or something. I mean, southern Chile in 1999 doesn't have medical care. I mean, it doesn't have that sort of thing. And, and so eventually they popped out onto a dirt road and right there was an ambulance. <laughs> I mean, even now, Santiago has ambulances. Where we were does not have ambulances. Uh, and the ambulance was there. And same thing, the driver never said anything. Nobody said anything to the driver, uh, but he just got out loaded me in, took off. And a couple of the guys then went back to the river because there were still 
other people, you know, at the river. And, and the first thing they did was uh, try to track down these two uh, Chilean fellas. And not only were they not there, but uh, by then people from the nearby village had come and no one fit the description. I mean, these were non-existent people. And when the people were told about this ambulance, they said, no, <laughs> that doesn't, like you Americans are, you know, crazy. My own understanding of death changed in 1999 when I died while kayaking in South America. I was pinned under eight to 10 feet of water at the base of a waterfall, and I was without oxygen for 30 minutes before CPR was initiated. And when I regained consciousness, I was in a state of shock. Not because I just drowned, not because of my multiply broken legs, and not because I was on the side of a remote river with no access to medical care. No, I was in an absolute state of shock because I could not believe that I'd been sent back to my body from a place I will call heaven. It was peaceful underwater, and I was held and comforted by Christ. And no, I didn't just think or hope it was Jesus. I knew it was Christ just as I would know my husband of 30 years if I'd seen him in the grocery store. And I was taken through a life review that had little to do with judgment and everything to do with understanding and compassion and grace. And I was shown the beauty that came out of every heartbreak, every challenge, and every disappointment of my life. And then I was released to the heavens. My spirit rose up and out of the river, and I was immediately greeted by a group of people or spirits who had known me and loved me as long as I have existed. And even as they took me down this beautiful pathway woven together with fibers of God's love and exploding with color and flowers and the aromas of flowers, I could look back at the river, and I watched as... My purple bloated body was pulled to the shore and my friends started CPR. And I recognized my body and I knew that I was dead. But despite having a magnificent life with a wonderful husband and these four young children who I loved more than life itself, I felt like I was home and I really had absolutely no intention of returning. And then I was told it wasn't my time, that I had more work to do on earth, and that I'd have to go back to my body. And I'm here tonight to tell you that death is nothing more than the doorway to home. And it is the very existence of this home that brings context, purpose, and meaning to our time here on earth.